Have you made any of them yet? Now, you know what I'm talking about. Those New Year's resolutions. Some of us will make some big ones, like dropping 50 pounds, exercising every day for 30 minutes. You know the drill. And there are a few of us who will make even bigger ones, like being a better spouse, being a better worker, being a better oh, whatever person in the world or a better employee or a better manager. Now, if your experience is anything like mine, all of those are going to go by the wayside by January 31st, if not sooner. But Dr. B.J. Fogg, founder of the Stanford University Behavior Design Lab, has developed what he calls tiny habits as a method to help us all, no matter what behaviors we either want to develop, repress, or things we want to do to be successful. I want to propose tonight for all of us that we take one behavior. It can be one you want to start can be one you want to get rid of as well and use the tiny habits method with it all year long. Now, before we talk a little more about the tiny habits method, we need to talk about behavior because that's important. Let me explain for just a moment how behavior works by talking to you about Dr. Fogg's behavior model. This takes just a minute or two. Now, behavior happens when three things occur. Motivation, ability, and a prompt. Now, sometimes you may hear the prompt called a trigger. Now, I want to show you a diagram. Hopefully you can see. Oh, I moved it down when we used it. There we go. This is a representation of Dr. Fogg's behavior model. Behavior equals that motivation, ability, and the prompt. You know, you see motivation. We can have low motivation or we can have high motivation along that continuum. And an ability, we can make things hard to do, or they can be hard to do, or they can be easy to do. Now, when we look at it, let's take an example. Bert, you'll like this example. Let's say we want someone to donate to the Red Cross. If they have high motivation and it's easy to do, they're going to be out here. And boy, the Red Cross is going to get that donation. If motivation's low and it's hard to do, it's going to be hard to get money out of a turnip for the Red Cross. Now, they'll be down here in this corner. Now, you'll notice this line. Love lines like this, especially in a graph like this one. This is called the action line. There's a relationship between motivation and ability. If you're below the action line, it's not going to get done. If you're above the action line, however, it's something that's pretty easy to do. This model applies to all kinds of human behavior. Doesn't matter. If motivation, ability, 
and a prompt come together at the same time, it's going to happen. And if none of them or one of them is not present, it won't happen. Now, the tiny habits method based on the behavior model talks to us about a number of things. The biggest thing that we need to understand is we want to start small. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean really small. What we want to do is we want to find a prompt or a trigger, something that we do every day. Dr. Fogg used the method of he needed to floss, floss his teeth. So prompted after he did some of his morning routine, he would floss one. Yes, ladies and gentlemen one tooth. He began to do that and it began to work every day. He would floss one tooth. Over time, that habit became better and better and better. And he was able to begin flossing everything on a regular basis. Now, I've tried this over the last several weeks, particularly to get myself ready for the new school year. My new tiny habit is this. After I walk into my classroom, I'm going to walk around the room once before I turn on my computer. Then re remind myself, it's going to be a good day. You can do that. We can all find one little thing we can do. And little things continue over and over to build on each other. Those tiny habits are tiny steps toward a longer and bigger journey in the new year. So I hope you'll join me in developing one tiny habit.